Hello everybody. Welcome back to Art by the Lake. Today we have some madness going for you. I get all kinds of questions about what's the best way to create cells. And so in order to, uh, to figure that out and in order to help you figure out what the best way to make cells is, we've come up with a method to test it. So today we're going to test silicone versus coconut milk serum. And you see these over in here. Dimethicone, which is another form of silicone, um, and rubbing alcohol. And this one is 91% rubbing alcohol. So we have four different canvases set up. We've mixed all our paints equally down in here, as you can see. And we're going to do four swirl pours uh, so that you can see the differences. So the paint consistency is exactly the same. You know we love wasting paint, but we don't like buying paint. So over here for the coconut, we have one set of colors. And it is, with all of these paints, it is two parts Floetrol, one part paint, and one part distilled water. We make our own colors. So a few of these are standard. This is my Nemesis Thalo Green. You see it here and here. Um, and the rest we kind of make up on our own. And again, this batch is going to be coconut milk serum. This batch is silicone. This batch is dimethicone. This batch is rubbing alcohol. Uh, we're going to do four swirl pours. I'm going to start all four canvases with a bunch of black paint down the middle. That'll help things get flowing and start making the mess. So I'm going to pour this down the middle. And while I'm doing that, um, I should remind everyone that because we have about a 20 minute limit on our camera um, before I have to reset it, I don't know why they do that. You can email Nikon and ask them why there's a 20 minute limit. But at about 20 minutes it will shut off. So I have to kind of watch the timer here that I have off to my right so I can see if we're pushing near that. If we push near that, all I really do is just restart it. So it requires me to just turn the microphone off for a minute and uh, restart the camera. Not a big deal. You won't notice it for, most, uh, for the most part. So I'm just kind of getting the canvas wet here so the paint will move around. The black does not have anything in it other than flow trawl water and paint. There's no silicone, there's no coconut, there's no there's no other things in the, uh, in the black. And I do the same with the white. Um, the only exception to that you'll see is that as part of the one green pour here, down here if you can see, there is black. And I did put dimethicone in that black. So um, we've got most of that color out. So I'm going to start quickly building my, my swirl pores. And they're in the order that you would want them in here. And I'm going to do this, if you notice down in the cup, I have a pour spout bent into the cup. I'm going to pour down in there. I'm going to pour gently down into there. Um, with this particular one, with the coconut, uh, I'm going to start with black just because for aesthetic reasons I want to do that. Um, we have about 33 colors here. So if you're wondering how many colors are sitting out in front of me, we have about 33. It has taken me close to an hour to build them all. I measure all of my paints on a scale. So, um, so they're accurate. So that it's easy to see, you know, how much uh, two parts of Floetrol is. So I'm going to be gentle. And as I pour these, I'm going to try to be gentle. The gloves I wear are a little bit slippy. And we're not setting a lot aside. Um, the swirl pour usually is not something that I touch up a whole lot. And you'll see what I mean by swirl pour once we get going. But for the most part, I'm pouring all of the paint in all of these. And this is the sort of slow part. So you'll see this part takes a few minutes. And so um, that's why when we do four of these, uh, I may have to reset the camera once, perhaps even twice. So you'll see I'm just sort of lining these up with the pour spout. 
I'm pouring them in gently and slowly. In looking at this, I'm assuming I probably have too much paint, but if you do these often enough and you use the cheaper paint right now like I do, um, you'll find you're better off to not come up short because if you come up short, you have to start remixing and that can be a pain. Uh, and it's a real pain, I will tell you, when you're doing the videos for YouTube because it just screws up the whole flow of things and you have to stop everything. You can kind of see down in there now. Uh, this one consists of black, yellow, orange, a deep orange, red, magenta, a deep purple color, a cobalt blue color, and my nemesis thalo green. And if you're wondering why I call it my nemesis, uh, check back through some of my other videos. And thalo green has a mind of its own. And no matter how hard you try to predict what it's going to do, it doesn't do that. So you'll see thalo is the one color I'm going to just go lightly on here. The good news is I'm pouring thalo last. So last in will be first out. First out will most likely sweep off the edge of the, the canvas. This is the point where you don't want to drop the cup. So, okay, here we go, very slowly, swirl pour. Takes a few minutes to get the swirl going. And it takes even longer to empty it out. So you'll see this can wear you out, just holding the cup here. This one will be challenging because there's so much paint going on and there's four canvases. So um, how we tilt and how we hit it with the torch and all that gets kind of mixed up because when I would normally be doing that, I will be actually working on the next canvas. So the one we're pouring now is actually going to sit for quite a while. Whether that's good or bad, you will have to decide in the end. As always with these, if you have a, a name that you think of that you like and that you think goes well with these paintings or one of these paintings, let me know. I try to name them before I do the YouTube video because ultimately these end up for sale on eBay and Etsy. So if you're interested in any of these, by all means check them out on eBay and Etsy and you can buy them. We do resin coat some of them, we do varnish some of them, we do frame some of them. So the price varies based on how much paint was put in and how much, uh, how much materials we use. The resin is expensive, so we try not to resin every single one. But as you can see, I'm starting to move the swirl a little bit north because everything seems to be migrating toward me. So I'm moving the swirl pour toward you. I'm on the opposite side of the table. So from the camera. Okay, we're getting down to just the black here at the end and I'm going to finish this swirl out. And put the cup aside. I can see already we need just a little bit of black in the corner up here to help things flow a little bit better. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that here. I put push pins in the bottom of this one and I also went around and painted the edges black. I like to do that just because then there's not so much pressure to get the paint to, uh, to flow over the edges and evenly and uniformly coat the edges, especially when I do the black paintings. I like, I like to do that. So a lot going on with that one. We'll give it a quick torch and then we'll move on to the next one. We are about 10 minutes in, so we're doing good on time. Probably only have to reset once. I kind of like this one. I'm not going to mess with it a whole, whole lot. 
Um, you can see we've got some flow over the edge. I'll put a pan under that. So down under the table, what you can't see is that we have an electrical outlet and that electrical outlet is powering our new lighting, which I didn't talk about yet, but, um, and the drip's going right on the electrical outlet. So, had to catch that. So the next one here, we're going to start with white. This one is silicone. You see how the coconut is doing already? You can kind of see some movement in the coconut. The white I'm pouring in here in the silicone does not have silicone in it. Every other color does have silicone in it. So, away we go. After this pour, uh, I will reset the camera so that we can start the next pour. If you hear beeping in the background, that is our time-lapse camera. And that will be at the end of this video. We do uh, one frame every 30 seconds and we let it run for about two hours after we cut the video off. And we find that's about the point that the paint stops moving and the video starts to get a little bit boring. So we cut it off at two hours. Okay, so in this one we have white, red, orange, yellow. If this sounds familiar, these are rainbow colors. If you remember from high school that they used to tell you how to remember the colors of the rainbow was with the name Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And that's what we're doing here. Just seemed like fun. Seemed like a good way to test out these different cell making materials. And that's the whole point here. We have lots of email people asking us which is better, coconut serum, silicone, dimethicone, or alcohol. And there are lots of videos on YouTube with people using all of them. Um, we have our favorites, and you'll see that in future videos and in past videos. You'll see which ones we use quite a bit uh, and which ones we don't use as often. I will tell you the dimethicone, the third one, we find it a little bit hard to get it to dry. So um, when you want to do something, if you want to seal your painting later or you want to uh, resin coat it or something along that line, it takes a while to dry for the dimethicone. It's so, so syrupy. It's also a little bit hard to work with because it is syrupy. So you may have a better experience with it than I do, but we find that one a little bit difficult to work with. So we don't use it as often. And the alcohol, I just don't have a ton of experience with yet. So we don't use that one as often either. Um, it is, you gotta sort of contain this bottle into a smaller cup. Okay, let's get our, uh, otherwise it gets messy, it gets dribbly. So there's a messy start, but. So you can see the silicone's really taken off on us. Orange tends to dominate. This one's a little bit challenging because uh, there's a lot of paint in these cups. So it's hard to get a fine point. You want a really fine point when you do a swirl pour. We'll get this one squared up. You can see we're down into the dominant orange color. You can see some of the other colors popping out of there. It's flowing pretty good toward me. Some interesting stuff flowing off to my, um, to your left, my right. And you'll see I sort of counteract that by moving my pour. If I don't think it's going the way I want it to, I will move the swirl in a different spot, which is kind of what I'm doing. You'll see I'm trying to help these a little bit. And like I said, we'll get this one going and then we'll reset the video and start another video. We are really red dominant right now in this one. So, um, and we're coming down to the very bottom of the cup, which is the white. So thankfully the white is going to swoop in here a little bit and save the day, I hope. And I'll, like I said, I will correct the corners on this one and then I'm going to reset the video. 
because we're probably pushing close to, yeah, we're a few minutes away from 20 minutes. So let me just fix these corners with a little bit of black. It's a little bit of a challenge now because I have four paintings so close together. Um, and you know the messiness of painting with pour. Okay, so I'm going to uh, reset the, the video rig and I will be right back. Okay, we're back. Other than just banging the time-lapse camera, which you'll notice later on in the time-lapse video, um, we completed that cleanly. So let's get the next two pours going. This one now is the dimethicone silicone. This has the consistency of, uh, of like maple syrup. And so that makes it really difficult to get an accurate amount in each cup. You know, when you're trying to do so many drops or, or something along that line, it just makes it really, really difficult to do. So um, that's again one of the sort of downsides of it. But we'll let you see based on the results if you like one better than the other. Everybody wants us to compare these, so we are. And you'll see as I pour them into the, uh, the pour cup here, I'm trying to alternate contrasting sort of colors, dark color, light color, dark color, light color, that sort of thing. I try never to put black and white together. They tend to just like to sink to the bottom and turn into gray. So, um, but you can try that and you can test it. It's hard to see. I can see it up close here. You can actually see the syrupy dimethicone in these cups as you pour. Here's the wild card in this one. It is black with dimethicone. Not something I do all that often. And you'll see that in the cup here, if you can see the cup, it's going to probably just sink and disappear. So I didn't pour a lot in there. Pour some yellow in. In this one we did white, green, phthalo green, a neon green. Black, yellow, hooker's green it's called. That's this color I'm pouring in now. And uh, a lightened color of hooker's green, a lightened version of it. We added some white to it, a little tiny bit of yellow to it. So this one's sort of a all green theme. I normally end on a dark color because that contrast nicely as it flows off the edge of the canvas. Uh, with this one I wanted to do it a little bit differently so I finished with a light color. So we're going to try to get this one going in a less messy manner. Maybe we accomplished that, maybe we didn't. You'll find with these swirl pours, you see what I'm doing is swirling it slightly around in a little bit of a circle. These are really hard to control um, but the results are really nice and can be really fun. You want a narrow stream and it's easier to move your whole arm. See how I'm doing that now? Rather than moving the cup, if you move the cup, the, uh, the paint tends to slosh around and if it sloshes around, it doesn't come out as evenly. So you see the phthalo green starting to dominate in this one. So that's kind of cool. Thalo Green and I have a love-hate relationship. Love to use it, hate the results sometimes. Okay, here comes that neon. I was kind of hoping the neon would stay on top. I shouldn't say that out loud in front of the Thalo Green because the Thalo will devour it. As you can see, it is.
So we have so much paint flowing over the edge. You see we're actually going to overtake the little sign that says dimethicone. Um, I didn't do a whole lot, but it ended up being, you know, so many colors that uh, it ends up being a really full cup. And with a really full cup, you're going to dump a lot of paint over the edge. But that's okay. That's the fun part. So I'm moving this one around just a little bit in order to try to control it a little bit better. We're coming down to our white color that we started with. If you listen carefully in the background, you can hear a dripping noise. And that is uh, this side of our canvas is going off onto the floor and we have put a little aluminum pan underneath it. Okay. So you can see how each one of these things is reacting. I'll come back with a little bit of torch on this third one. Wake up some cells in the dimethicone. These are going to migrate quite a bit. So, so let's do our fourth and final. Uh, again, this one is started with white. And then we have sort of a dark blue that we've created ourselves, sort of a gray blue right here. The amount of paint I'm using, a larger container, um, I'm just using these 8 ounce, 10 ounce cups, whatever they are, for the overall pour. If you had a larger container, we normally use a big Pyrex measuring glass cup, glass cup, um, that can hold a lot more. It's easier to keep it tilted more, which is what I like. I'll hold this out a little bit better here. I don't want to drip across the other canvases though, so I'm a little bit limited, but you get the idea of how I'm pouring. So there's a sort of a turquoise. This is a cobalt blue. followed by this odd grayish turquoise that we created. This has a little bit of silver in it. That may be the only variable here is that in this pour we've used some metallic paint. You can see they're behaving a little bit differently because um, I think because of the alcohol. So we'll see. We'll see what our final results are. I'm, I'm expecting it to behave one way with all four of these. And so I'll tell you here at the end, when we have sort of our final result, if it has behaved how I anticipated it has behaved with each of the four. And we'll check my time here too in a minute. So this last color, I, I did a gray color there. And then this last color is a silver blue metallic that I mentioned. And so, I'm not really sure how this is going to play with the other colors. And again, last in, first out. First out is usually the one that gets blown off the side of the canvas. So we'll see if we can get this up to a point and get a nice swirl pour going here without being too messy. So this one's turning out kind of neat already the neon and the silver. I hope they stay. When you're doing swirl pours, keep in mind the cups or the colors you put in the cup first are the colors that come out last. So I try to keep that in mind in the hope that the colors I really want to stay resident on the canvas I will put in very early into the cup so they come out very late in the pour. Now this one's not pouring smoothly. I feel like there's a little bit of lump going on here, but we'll just keep going with it. And while I'm pouring the fourth one, you know, you can 
still be watching that first one to see what you think and what your favorite cell creator is or cell enhancer is. Some people swear they create cells without any additives. I've seen it. I uh, myself have done it, but you have to be super, super accurate on your paint mix. And even then, it seems like the temperature of the room or the temperature of the paint or, you know, blind luck play quite a role in it. Okay, we're coming down to the end of the fourth pour. Okay, let me just set that one off to the side. Okay, so you have four here. Um, from your left to your right, we have coconut milk serum. You can see lots of big cells. Uh, after I'm done talking about them, I'll hit each one of them with the torch again. But lots of big cells over here with the coconut milk serum. Uh, different colors. The colors are really interesting on this one and the layout is really kind of interesting. I like it. The black, ending with the black, which is the first cup uh, color you put in the cup, I'm not so sure I would do again, but I like it. Um, this one is our Rainbow Colors Roy G. Biv leading off with white into the dirty cup. Again, so white comes out last. This one has pretty good cells. Pretty good cells in the corner, really interesting stuff all overall. This is silicone, um, so I like that. You will find these are the two I use the most commonly. Um, coconut milk serum is new to me, so I'm still kind of messing around with that. Next we have dimethicone. I haven't used a lot of dimethicone. Again, hard to work with, but I think some really interesting cells and some really interesting cell shapes going on here. Uh, again, sometimes the proof here is how long it takes to dry. So that's something to keep in mind with this one. Um, and then finally, we have uh, isopropyl alcohol, 91%. Um, we did all blues in this one. I think this one's really interesting. Uh, an interesting mix of cells. They seem to be much, much smaller um, right now. Again, I'm going to hit them with the, hit these last two with the torch and see what we get. So there's a little activity there. It's my feeling that the, uh, the alcohol seems to evaporate the quickest, which I think will, will benefit me later on when I'm trying to get these paintings to dry quickly. But it doesn't seem to help with the creation of the cells. So that's a little bit tricky. Um, I'm going to pull some of the black here that I used in this one and just coat the edges. And we're just about ready to call it done and let the time lapse run. But we'll, we'll fix these corners on this one. Um, I'll use the main color black I have to fix the corners on the last one. If you like what you're doing, well, if you like what you're doing, keep doing it. Um, if you like what we're doing, subscribe to us on YouTube. We are Art by the Lake. If you're watching this, you've probably already found us. But subscribe to us if you can. Um, we'd like to get all of our audience back over here and back together so that we can do a little bit more with the channel. If you are interested in asking me any questions, you can reach me at artbythelake at gmail.com or you can comment in this video. I do check comments. I do try to answer all the comments. If you are interested in purchasing any of these paintings or you're just interested in seeing how much we charge for the paintings, um, you can find us on eBay and Etsy. Both of those are Art by the Lake. So find us there. This is our 33 color pour, swirl pour, comparing coconut milk serum, silicone, dimethicone, and alcohol. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for subscribing.